Reactive Training Systems. So whenever I hear someone say that they tried to do some high frequency training and it just didn't work for them or they somehow failed in making that transition, I always wonder how it is that they went about making the transition because I know for myself it wasn't easy. Uh, I didn't always train with a higher frequency. Uh, if you go back into m my early and middle training career, I trained with uh, what by today's standards would be considered a moderate to low frequency. Uh, you know, something of hitting each major lift twice a week, you know, so it amounts to an upper lower split, you know, training upper body twice a week, lower body twice a week. Um, yeah, so by today's standards, these are moderate to low frequencies. And, um, you know, when I made that transition to, you know, training lower body four times a week and upper body four times a week, you know, it's three times a week squatting, you know, two times a week deadlifting, you know, four times a week benching. When I made that transition, it was not an easy transition to make. Um, I didn't just pick it up and do it. I didn't even ease into it. Uh, the way that I went about it, uh, and keep in mind that this was, you know, early internet days and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, people around that were doing it. Uh, that can help you make the transition or help me make the transition. Um, I saw this idea, I thought it was interesting, and I tried it. Uh, I came up with a plan that looked good to me, um, and I just implemented it. Uh, I was able to hang in there for about four weeks. After four weeks, I was too tired and beat up to continue, uh, so I went back to my old upper-lower split. Uh, the thing is, at this point, you know, I'd kind of, I'd kind of seen it, you know, I'd seen what I was missing a little bit, so um, the old upper-lower split didn't really satisfy me very much anymore. Uh, I hung in there for probably another four weeks before giving the uh, high-frequency template a try again, and this time I was able to hang on a little bit longer, you know, say six weeks or something like that before going back to my upper lower split. And then the th by the third time I tried the high frequency stuff, I had made the adaptation and, and I was able to hang in there and, and complete the work. Uh, it wasn't easy, but it was something that I could do. And, uh, you know, I, I pretty much never looked back. Uh, only occasionally since then have I done some upper lower work uh, to any extensive degree and it's just not the same stimulus. Um, I've even driven the, the frequency slightly higher uh, in the year since then uh, on a little bit more gradual basis. So I just want to tell you that story and share that story with you guys just to say if you are currently doing something low to moderate frequency and you want to give a higher frequency program a try, there's nothing wrong with that. Just realize that you know, you may get beat up for a while. That doesn't mean high frequency doesn't work for you. It just means that you need some time to develop into it. Just like you need some time to develop uh, increased strength and improve your max over the course of, uh, you know, uh, depending on how much we're talking about, possibly a long period of time. It's the same thing with driving up your training frequency and your training volume in general. They're good things and they're good tools to use, uh, especially when used appropriately. But it's always something that needs to be eased into. So that's all I've got for you guys this week. Uh, as always, take what's there in your training, build some momentum. We'll see you next time. Reactive Training Systems.